And so, I suppose, the reason I took a year out, a couple of us had been, well, I went to a couple of lads in the class as well, I went to New Zealand, but uh, it was kind of a long drawn up process whereby we couldn't go straight away because we had no money. Um, so New Zealand was kind of first and foremost in our heads, and uh, one of the guys mentioned it and it just kind of stuck. So the reason we took the Euro anyways initially was to take a break, um, get some architecture experience as well, well to try to, and just see the world. Uh, so I suppose the initial task was to make some money. Um, so just before I finished college, um, let's say just a little bit before May, I started selling drawings like these. And um, I kept it up, and uh, that's kind of how we plan to make money for a whole year, more or less, so I could keep myself going. So I did that for about six months, and I uh, started to kind of basically make myself known in, in the area um, where I'm from, selling art, and I kind of went all around Ireland selling these things. Um, so I suppose, as well as that, I was trying to improve my skills, you know, to bring back to architecture as well. So. Um, in that sense, I probably find it's helped me a lot in my presentation skills and things like this. So, uh, as well as buildings, I was doing landscapes and kind of, you know, Christmas cards. I was a real salesman, it was pretty funny. <laughs> um, going around with a luminous green folder around Park City and God was getting funny looks. Um, but there in the bottom right hand side, you kind of see this little um, set of watercolors. This is taken in New Zealand, this photograph. And, uh, I suppose I became um, kind of intimate with the paper I was using because I was doing so many of these drawings and so I kind of had a whole lot of extra watercolour paper that when I was leaving I said oh, I wonder if I can bring that with me so I, I kind of cut them down into the postcard size and uh, I put them in this little black copy book here and I carried them around everywhere, uh, I carried it around everywhere with me and uh, the little white blocks there so that's um, that's my little watercolour set that I intended to get to learn how to use. So the next slide then, we went to Tokyo at the start of January. Myself, Ray, Connor, Sean and Dermot. Most contemporary um, Japanese ar architecture as we could. I can't remember who exactly did that building, I think it was Toyo Rebo, later on though. Um, but uh, an interest in mine as well as martial arts, so I was absolutely delighted to find out that um, a tournament final was happening um, the same week that we were there. So we got the cheapest tickets we could get, and probably the only Westerners in the whole building. We got really into it with our uh, kind of local or regional Dutch gold as well. <laughs> um, on the right hand side as well, I like going even in Ireland, and I'm always interested in ecclesiastical architecture, so I got as many temples uh, as we could. We were only there for a week in Tokyo, which is kind of a shame. Didn't really have as much time as we could have used, maybe to get outside the city and do some bikes and things like this. Um, but there in the bottom left hand corner you can see Yokohama Ferry Terminal, which is why uh, Sean did a model of that in first year. Um, he, was, he was really, really, really anxious to, to get there, so we got there and uh, it was incredible. It's about a 500 meter long building that projects into the bay. And uh, these ferries come in and it's, it's a really tall building and it's, it's almost at the same height as the top of the ferry. But underneath there is this um, structure that Sean did really well in his first year model. And uh, I could have got a funny photograph with him here, but I decided not to embarrass him. And so here in the middle, if you go into the city centre of Tokyo, um, it's broken down into lots of districts, um, kind of anime districts and, you know, like Sega Mega Drive buildings and things like this. Um, so that's actually the Sega building there. Um, I suppose there are lots of those kind of metal buildings in, the, in, in my eyes. The city is, uh, I'm sure there's over 32 million people living there in the area, um, but it's the cleanest space I was ever in. It's you couldn't compare it to it. Like it's it's phenomenally clean, uh, sparkling. Like um, that's not what anyways. But it's just the kind of approach that everyone has in Tokyo um, is is that of care, and everyone cares for everything that they want. If it's beautiful or not, even the ugly dogs cleaning for a while. Um, <laughs> there's no there's no dirt on the ground. Like, one week we were there, I didn't hear one slur, I didn't hear one um, horn being hooted or anything. Everybody lines up, there's no jaywalking, apart from when the Limerick voice came, came to the 
But um, there, there's an example of one of my water colors as well that I did last time in the sumo. Um, just a quick sketch when I took you know, a minute and then I painted that way when I get home. Um, so Australia, Australia was a funny one because we got to Cairns um, with the intention of, you know, all right, so we're, we're hitting another city you known as the gateway to Australia, but in essence, Cairns um, has nothing good going for it at all. <laughs> or Cairns, as they call it. Um, so, but it is in the middle of a, a tropical area, so we, we went into the rainforest and had a great time swimming and jumping off massive cliffs and things. Um, but at the same time, this um, enormous cyclone was coming in, the biggest there had been for a long time, and uh, we had to get out of Dodge. So we got a we got a camper van and, and drove a thousand kilometers in one night. Uh, it took eighteen hours or something. Like this. Actually, I think it was more than a thousand kilometers. But uh, we landed. If you look at the, the top right hand side there, we landed in this place called Awunga, Lake Awunga, um, and it was famous for for uh, catching these human sized fish that weigh seventy five kgs. But we didn't find this out until until after we went for a swim. We initially scouted the area for crocodiles, but there wasn't any nurse that was chanced it. Um, down on the bottom left hand side here, Sydney Opera House. Um, I kind of like the watercolor there, so I didn't, I didn't bother um, putting in any photograph because pretty much every tourist has a photograph of Sydney Opera House. So there's a great barrier reef up in Cairns as well. Oh, I suppose Cairns is great. Uh, Cairns is alright. Surface Paradise is a strange one. It's, uh, it's kind of a bit of Tokyo on a, a little bit of Miami voice. Um, a very, very strange place. Um, it's, it's got a, a whole kind of row, a uh, boulevard uh, along, along kind of like Salt Hill, except on the on the inner uh, side of the of the road, there are skyscrapers for the bones of a mile, I imagine. But um, it's a famous place, and lots of people from New Zealand will go there and um, go to these theme parks and roller coasters and things like this. We didn't even know they existed. Like it's very poorly kind of organized, uh, especially lots of the cities are. So uh, this is our house in New Zealand. Um, like Dave, we had a lot of trouble getting uh, work, and myself and I were first to get work if, if we were gone directly after two weeks. So um, we chanced around and we, we got a house before we got a job. Um, however, houses in New Zealand come with no furniture. Uh, we just happened to have one chair in the basement that they kept out of the main house for some reason. We um, adopted our own ways to sit around the room. Uh, but uh, all, all in all, we were kind of collecting lots of cardboard to, to uh, hopefully completely furnish our, our own house. But I uh, never really got around to doing it because of work and different things. Drink, I suppose. <laughs> Uh, Ray and myself had a go at uh, designing furniture anyways one day we had a, a day off work. Uh, so that's my, my little contraption up on the right hand side and it was um, supposed, supposed to be full of one box of cardboard um, that could be folded up to make this little chair where it touches the ground in three places here that Ray is showing a little model of it. But I couldn't remember how to make it again so uh, it didn't really work out. <laughs> It was good um, exercise though, it took a few hours. Ray had a really nice one as well. It would have worked a lot better than me. Um, the sketchbook was always with me, and um, I actually have one of my sketchbooks there as well. Anyone is more than welcome to come up and, and look through them and scrutinize later on. Um, so on the, on the left hand side here, starting at the top, I was scaffolding. I, I, was, I was scaffolding, I was landscaping. I was working for a furniture repairs company, and I was um, surveying pipes and where you put pipes down in infrastructure I would have got um, so any basically any job that I got I was taking notes on how to you know how to do it better because when you're going into a job like that um, I found that like I really wanted to make an impression purely because uh, I kind of wanted to keep climb up the ladder because we couldn't get architecture work I got really good references off, off the lectures as well, like they really helped me out. Um, you know, to put it, you know, at the end of my um, portfolio. I, I actually, the portfolio was a good exercise as well in, in kind of reflecting over your, 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 your years of architecture. Um, I suppose this is a strange kind of reflection on the year as well. Uh, but on, on the left hand side there, on the, on the, 
that double spread is uh, one side is, is uh, writing down all the different joints that I, that I was dealing with um, in, the, in the scaffolding and all the different members and their sizes and weights and things. I was lifting heavy loads for more or less five hours in order. You see, this is the best place in order to make money. Um, but on the, on the right hand side then, uh, like Dave, uh, we did a lot of reading and uh, that's just a kind of little drawing from architecture without architects. And in many ways I felt like I was on the front line um, in architecture without architects because uh, then the earthquakes were happening as well in New Zealand. Um, Apart from my job with the furniture repairs and office um, removals company was uh, seismic bracing where um, they're trying to brace anything above 1.2 meters to the wall so that it doesn't fall over and trap some, somebody. But uh, you find when you go into those offices, um, nobody really cares about the furniture, they're more cared about the 10 stories above them. That could come down. So, oh, sorry. Um, this is Wellington here. So um, I was working on this building here. It was a 17 um, story building and uh, we were making um, swing stage scaffolding so painters could go up and down and paint it. And it would have cost 40,000 um, to paint this building. Um, 20,000 for the scaffolding company, 20,000 for the, um, the painters. So um, this is a famous Wellington kind of landmark here. It's the, Cable here, like that goes up and down, and lots of wet, like basically everyone in Wellington. Uh, it's first of all, it's, it's based in this beautiful bay here at the bottom of the North Island, and uh, it's a gateway to the South Island. That the ferries that come and go, you'll all see that as well in, in, in the World Cup. That's where we're kind of color things. Um, so, the main city where it operates down here, and just out along this side of the bay here, there's another orbital city, it's called uh, Petoni in the upper hut. And it's a very strange situation where we, all of the um, industry happens out here. Um, building, scaffolding, painting companies, they all tr um, come in along the motorway and uh, work in here. Um, anyone living in the area again, lives on this uh, upper kind of zone of uh, Wellington's and Nepal as well, so it's around the mountains and everybody in the suburbs are, are up around the outside, which is kind of not, not the nicest walk after a hard day's lifting four or five tons of steel. Um, so then, uh, I suppose, you know, at the same time we were going to the library, you know, any, any chance we could, and trying to see what they had there. So uh, I was going through a lot of uh, Maori architecture books and, and going on little um, field trips to different places as well. Uh, I was trying to sell drawings of buildings as well over there, but it wasn't really the same thing, it would really work. Um, so this is a, an old Maori meeting house. And uh, this is an exploded exo of the different parts. And um, basically, every every structural member here is related back to the human body. Um, and the, the meeting place basically is a kind of a warrior's kind of place to be as well. And um, the warriors would have been the uh, <coughs> would have epitomized dead warriors and, and uh, kind of almost saints like figures would would have been kind of named after these. Now, uh, meeting was. So then also at the same time, I went on this field trip to this uh, chapel, it's called Fortuna Chapel, it's made by the first Maori architect, it's called um, John Scott in the 50s. And so I found this a really interesting place and it was actually the most beautiful, um, we'd say, modernist um, space or, or um, church area I've been in. And uh, I sat down and drew this for, I had the keys and it was completely closed up. Um, so I had the running, the running out to myself and I sat there for a good few hours. And I, I just drew as much as I could. It's really dark and my camera isn't the best. So I, I couldn't really get great photos with their best photos I, I had. Um, so I suppose back to, back to UL animes and put my feet down in, in the architecture studio again. So this was um, <coughs> the other great thing about going to New Zealand is that you can drive everywhere. It's a little bit bigger in Ireland. You, you, can, you might have to drive for six hours to get to a place where three or two. But the places you get there are phenomenal, phenomenally, phenomenally beautiful. Um, this is one of my uh, New Zealand friends. The lads had, had long gone at this stage. I stayed on to work and make some money. Uh, I didn't bring any back, but uh, I spent it on going to places like this. And it was well worth it. 20 kilometer hike to get there. So that's it, anyways. Thanks very much. <laughs>